rail cut. Oh, that's great. I'd said in a previous video that uh, it, this back jar, I'd squared it up to the left hand side of this casting on the bed and uh, obviously it wasn't square. Two of those to do. Might do a little video on it. Basically what it is, is uh, I've now, I took my uh, radio amateur exams in 1989 and I never bothered with a license. It was after the CB years really. And uh, I just got interested in it, in it again. And uh, I contacted Ofcom and they said, yeah, yeah, we're still on a city and guilds. They're for life. I said, great. So I sent them in or copies of an application form and today I've received my call sign so I'm now officially a radio amateur only the foundation one though I have to sit at the intermediate exam if I wish to go further and to get the full license is very hard well for me it's all right if you're into uh, electronic circuitry a lot a lot of circuitry involved for the full license but on a full license, you can transmit at 400 watts. Uh, on the foundation license, I think my maximum is 10. I don't know whether that jumps up to about 100 with your uh, intermediate. I've sat a few mock exams on the computer for the intermediate and I've passed them all easily. Reasonably easily. It's only a 60% pass mark. So basically, I've got my old Shakespeare Super Big Stick aerial, which is 10, 11 metre band um, and I'm going to put it back up I'm just hoping it's okay inside and not corroded away but it's a Shakespeare fishing rod basically and they, they've made CB aerials out of them did Shakespeare it cost a lot of money when I bought it back in the 80s uh, so I'm going to make some brackets I've already made a, a collar idea which I've made some Delrin bushes tonight. This is a piece of inch and a quarter exhaust tubing. That's gonna, the aerial's gonna slide in and out of it. The aerial, when it's up, is 18 foot long. Uh, and I don't wanna have it stuck up 18 foot long when I'm not using it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is. So I might as well look at you, or well, you might as well look at me as look at my hands waving about. So yeah, I'll cut this piece of angle iron on the newly recently acquired 4B6 bandsaw. I'm really pleased with that, I really am. It's cutting superb, very slow, but then I never thought it'd be fast. And the, the blade's mediocre, probably could do with a new one. I don't know how many years old that blade is. So I was trying to work out a way of making this Shakespeare Super Big Stick aerial mount up on. Originally, I was going to put a sort of a pole up at the side of the house and wind it up. Um, if any of you have got any idea about transmitting RX power, um, yeah, sorry, RX means receive, transmitting power. Uh, it can cause interference to electrical equipment. Um, a bit like some guys more about inverters, but a lot more so. Um, the radio arm equipment that I'm planning on getting, I've already got a couple of radios that I need to do some work on. I used to be a bit of a rig doctor many years ago, but I can only go so deep um, electronically. Um, but there's a, some tuning to do on these. So, uh, I've decided not to mount it on the house wall and as I look out my window here I'm probably 10 metres to the corner of my workshop here away from the house and I thought that's probably plenty to, to stop any local interference on TVs etc. I mean when I was in my younger days on AM and sideband CB I used to wipe two or three houses out they were always complaining about it but I was running some silly ridiculous burners amplifiers uh, anyway back to it 
is this is a piece of exhaust tube. It's on a thin wall because it's exhaust tube, it's steel. I've made two nylon Delrin bushes that accept the aerial. Now the aerial is in two sections, a tip, the top of it is a, a small fishing rod, I guess, a Shakespeare, which will have obviously the conductor at the centre to make it resonant at uh, 10 or 11 metres. The base is quite a big chunky one inch diameter fishing rod which you see the likes of on big boats, fishing boats and things that go out to the bay and do the fishing trips. So my idea is when I'm not using it it'll be down. Now when it's down it'll be only eight foot lower than when it's up because I've got a pagoda, pagola out here that I built um, last year and it's all in uh, four by four timber, uh, fence post type timber, tunnelized stuff and it's quite well braced and fixed and I thought yeah that'd be a good um, a good holder for the aerial so when I'm not using it it will be down and when I'm using it it'll be up and this is going to live right up at the top of the four by four fence post. One of these pieces of angle iron I've yet to cut another one because this isn't that strong I want confident that with the wind eventually it might fracture. So I'm going to bore a hole in here to accept this. So this will live in a pocket there and one up near the top. And then I'm going to TIG weld them all the way around. And then I might even also put some reinforcing steel down to give it a a better hold uh, in, a, in more of an area if you like of the steel tube as opposed to just nipping at a point where eventually it'll fracture off. I've held the aerial which that's the length of the bottom part of the aerial which is an aluminium sleeve that that's what you clamp it with. I used to have that clamped on my house wall at my other house on U-bolts, two U-bolts on it. Um, it's quite strong uh, but I've held the aerial up and even though it's 18 foot long it's not heavy, it's a fishing rod, so it is never going to be heavy, you've got to fish with it. So I'm going to use this tube and this will be the brace of it and the area will slide up. A bit fiddly, but it works.
So, piece of exhaust pipe. A uh, Delrin bush in each end. <clears throat> Bolts to go right through the 4x4 fence post, 10mm. We've got a locating square in there. I'm going to turn that off on the lathe so these just clear and go straight through there, like that. The idea being, I'll take the bottom bush off, is that that one goes there, oops, and I'm going to put that one up right like that, one there, and then be TIG welded all the way around. Got to clean all the crap off there first though. Got a little TIG welder, doesn't like uh, metal with swathy sort of surface. That's where we are so far. Just wants painting now. I just hope it's going to be okay. It's not heavy though, the aerial, it's massive, but it's not heavy because it's only a, a, a fiberglass fishing rod, really. So it should be okay. If not, we'll make something else. of the pergola. Feet.
that's the uh, CRT um, 7900. I do have the manual for it somewhere. It's in focus. It's that. It's quite a nice thing actually, um, if not a bit noisy, the, the, the very very latest ones have got a better noise blanker on I believe, but that is um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and I think I channel A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H I might be one up there. Uh, well, let's have a look. Let's have a look while we're here. Turn some power on. I've got a lovely power supply. It's a 15 amp regulated power supply and it's great, but God, it's noisy. Zoom you in. I don't want to go out of focus. So that's A band, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. And back to A. Each of those bands has got 40 channels. Um, I have got the software lead for it, which I will be plugging in. And with that plugged in, you can actually go up to 60 channels per band. So that's uh, quite a lot of channels. Basically, it goes from somewhere in 25 meg. Of course, it hasn't been set up, so yeah, it's no point in me showing you. But somewhere from the... 25 meg right up to 30 so it covers a hell of a, uh, a band width what else we got I'm only just starting out an old CB that's just got my um, foundation license of which I took my exams as you will have heard already some time ago that's a very nice uh, antenna matching unit I've been told not to call it a tuning unit because it's not but it says it is um, and it's the MFJ uh, MFJ 949E which has got two outputs it's got a dummy load um, it's got bypass so if you can use the um, you can use the uh, tuner built in or you can just bypass it if you've got a good SWR um, on some of the channels, the SWR is not good at all. Yeah. That's another thing with this radio, is it's not transmitting on some channels. It goes into transmit, but there's no power. So I need to get the software um, set up on it and, uh, and go through it. Because it's obviously been set just for CB channels. And... Uh, not not nothing else it does <clears throat> pa so you can stick a my uh, speaker in and listen to yourself echo in if you want fm am upper side band and lower side band and that's it but a nice thing it wasn't expensive but it's second hand of a guy in the uk now, I haven't unboxed my other set that I've bought. Um, and it wasn't expensive, but I got it from America. And it's a 10-meter ham radio. And it's a... Go on. Any tone. Uh, AT, is it? 5555 five, five, five plus. But again, it's not the plus N, I believe. So it hasn't got the full noise blanker, which is an handy thing to have. 
If money weren't an object, I'd be looking at a lovely ASU 991A, probably, that's got all modes on it. It's got UHF, VHF, HF, a lot of features, a lovely waterfall display. Then there's the, is it ICOM 7300? But that's on the HF apparently, it doesn't do UHF and VHF, which is something I need to get into now I've just got my license so uh, this is really tail end of the I fitted my aerial and it's there and it works there's not many people on though I must admit I couldn't find many channels I have been told 10 meter bands pretty dead it might be all right first thing in the morning when the sun comes up get some uh, some DX stuff okay guys